Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning is Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together, let us pray the collect of the day. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God who is like me. Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from, from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? 
There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the psalm for today are verses from Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may never fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. Then I will rise up against me, O God, and bear the Lord again against my life. You have not sent me with my dear one. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second reading is from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? Where did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reaper, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parables of the, weed of the weeds of the field. He answered, the ones who sow the good seed 
the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is a devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all, and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm sure that many of you speak uh, more than one language. And if you do, then you know that languages are cultural. They have words that mean something within that culture that often can't be translated or doesn't really mean anything in other languages. <clears throat> For example, in Japan, the word yugen, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right, but um, is a profound, mysterious sense of the beauty of the universe and the sad beauty of human suffering. It's a concept that's very important in the Japanese culture and the exact translation often depends on the context in which it's used. Also, in the language called Pasquian, which is the language that's spoken on Easter Island, there's a word called Tingo. And it means slowly and gradually stealing your neighbor's things by borrowing them and not returning them until you've built up a collection of all things that are not yours. <laughs> At this point in history that we heard about this morning from Isaiah, we know that the people of Israel have been conquered by the Babylonians and that the people of Judah have been taken into exile, living in Babylon. And um, Isaiah is now speaking to a colonized people. So in this morning's reading, when, uh, when he says, to them, thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and Israel's Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. That word Redeemer, the way it's translated into English, is actually the word from Hebrew, Goel. And a Goel actually means a relative who fulfills family obligation to a person in need. And depending on the need, the relative will change. So somebody in that family will take care of the person's need. And in this case, God is taking care of the need of Israel. And their need is to be freed from a land that worships false gods, to be brought back to their own land, to be self-governing and free to practice temple worship. Well, that's not unique to their time. Throughout all of history and even into our time, we also live in a land of false gods. In our world in our time, we've come to idolize power and status. We want to be in power because we know that the people who are in power tend to control the people who are not in power. 
and we want to be the ones who make the decisions. We idolize money and wealth because with money comes power, the power to be self-determining in a dog-eats-dog -dog world. And then we idolize possessions because we want the comforts of the flesh in this life. And now we've come to idolize youth. And most of all, we idolize independence, the freedom that no one can tell me what to do. Last week, I mentioned to you about parables and how they are stories that are thrown alongside something to make a comparison. In Matthew's time, the writer is writing to the followers of Jesus, and there are divisions in society. There's various groups and various ways of thinking and various levels in the hierarchy. And Matthew's Jesus is telling this parable at a time when the earlier follow, the early followers of Jesus were tempted to play God and decide who's in and who's out. Ever since the dawn of creation, people, Caesar and other leaders, and now corporate entities have been trying to play God. In early June, the Ninth Circuit dealt a blow to the chemical company Monsanto. It vacated the EPA's approval of the controversial pesticide Dicamba, saying that the EPA failed to properly assess the risk of this widespread chemical use. A three-judge panel unanimously vacated Dicamba. It's a herbicide that has caused issues not so much because of its toxicity to humans, but because of its tendency to drift when applied, thereby damaging neighboring crops. Dicamba, which was developed by Monsanto, the company now called Bayer Crop Science, it was developed in response to a trend of several weeds that were developing uh, resistance to the chemical we know as Roundup. And so the scientists at Monsanto genetically engineered soybean and cotton seeds that were resistant to Dicamba. So you could spray it on your, on your field of soybean and cotton seeds, and it would kill the weeds, but it wouldn't kill the soybean and the cotton seeds. But what they didn't take into account was that the wind would blow it onto other crops and other fields, and that it would end up killing crops and trees and plants. That's what happens when a corporate entity tries to play God. Thinking back to the reading in Isaiah, what we hear is Isaiah is, is all focused upon ridiculing the false gods. And God invites anyone else who will claim to be God to come and step up and to counter the claim. God says, I am the first and I am the last. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Whoever is like me, don't even try because no one else, nothing else is like the God of Israel. 
So stop even trying. That's the message of Isaiah. We are so quick in our world to take on the role of trying to play God, of judging who thinks right and who doesn't think right, who's in and who's out. We make the proclamations that are God's alone to make. And God tells us that nobody is like him, that we need to stop pointing at ourselves. Now, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, Paul understands this sense of sin permeating the world. And sin is what drives a wedge between us and God. It turns us away from God so that all we're doing is looking in the mirror and seeing ourselves, and seeing our own sense of what it is to be God. And so Paul, Paul recognizes that this sense of sin is much, much bigger than the fact that I sin too much personally and that you do. It's a pervasive cosmic power that is at work in the world separating God's creatures from God, turning us away from looking toward God and reflecting God in the world, recognizing that only God is the one who is capable and has the right to make the judgments. When we look at God and we try to be God, deciding who gets in, who thinks right, if we take that parable to heart, chances are we would be throwing our decampa on all of the fields and killing not only the weeds, but also the good crops. It's a complicated world that we live in. And sin is pervasive. But what is promised to Israel and is promised to, through Jesus, to his followers, is that no one is like God. God is merciful, slow to anger, gracious, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And it is that God who chooses to love and nurture the whole of creation, all of us and all of the world, as God works to redeem us, to be the relative who reaches out on our behalf to take care of our need. So rather than being the ones who judge the weeds and the plants, the crops, perhaps we are the weeds and the crops. <clears throat> perhaps if we look within ourselves, it's not one or the other, but that we are both and. And if we go around deciding on which weeds to pull, perhaps we're also pulling the good crops. And so Jesus in his parable, he tells us that God is just and merciful 
slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And in that, we have the opportunity to grow throughout our lifetime, throughout the cosmic life, the time of all of creation. God is nurturing so that we grow. This is God's intention to draw us all back into wholeness. So rather than being those who pick the crops, pick the weeds and the, and the plants, perhaps our role is to witness to where we see God and God alone, to witness to those places where we see God's mercy, where we see a God who is slow to anger, a God who is gracious and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. When we witness to those things, that's where our hope is founded. We, don't, we can't see the end of the story. We can't see what happens to creation when it comes to its fullness at the end of time. But we have seen these acts of God throughout history and in our own lives and in the lives of those we love. We have seen God love creation into its full growth and bloom and healing and wholeness. When people walk around and wonder if the world has gone to hell in a handbasket, we can say emphatically that no, it has not. That God is alive and well in the field, even though there are weeds and crops. And so as people of faith, let us be witnesses to God in the world, not to the false gods of this world. And we do that by pointing out and returning to scripture to remind us what the one true God looks like, merciful, gracious, abounding in steadfast love, and faithfulness. Where you see those things, you see God. And that is the good news that we as witnesses are called to share with this hurting world. Amen. We continue by confessing our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Confident of God's care for us in the midst of the world's sufferings, we join together in the power of the Spirit to pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need. Responding to the words, teach us your way with the phrase, you are full of compassion. God of the church, we praise you for sowing the good seed of the gospel throughout the world. And we mourn that at this time, many Christians cannot assemble to nurture one another for growth uh, in the faith. Tend to your people, support bishops, priests, deacons, and lay leaders. Give us strength through your word. Oh God, teach us your way. You are God of earth, we praise you for wondrous creation, and we mourn that many lands and seas are gro groaning for rebirth. Nurture our green spaces and national parks. Send rain where there is drought. Protect endangered animals from poachers. Show us how to care for your earth and its creatures. Oh God, teach us your way. Lord, you Lord, are full of compassion. compassion. God of the nations, we praise you for the good that has been given us in this country, and we mourn that many people here are poor and dispossessed, and that we have allowed racism to distort our society, that violence breaks out in our land. Lead us to form communities in which all people are equally equal and where disputes are settled without violence. Save us from preserving a past that has been harmful to many. Bring an end to warfare around the world and mend the torn fabric of humankind with your truth and mercy. O oh God, to just your way. You are full of compassion. God of humankind, we praise you for wherever health and happiness prevail, and we mourn that many people suffer. Each day, thousands more contract the virus. Renters are facing eviction. Medical workers are exhausted. Some of the sick have no access to health care. Countless people are broken by sorrows. Open our hearts to your children who suffer in any way and show us how to serve them. O oh God, teach us your way. You are God of the seasons, we praise you for the summertime and we mourn that this year many hopes and expectations are denied. Give relief to those who suffer from the heat and cannot escape it. Protect travelers from infection. Guard our children. Give rest to those with no vacation time. Hope to those who are unemployed and patience to all who must endure this difficult time. Oh God, teach us your way. You, you are full of compassion. compassion. God, you are Abba, our loving Father. You are our sovereign of our lives, our Redeemer, the rock on which we build. Hear us as we offer the petitions of our hearts. Oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. God of eternity, we praise you for all who have died in the faith and we mourn our own beloved dead. At the end, bring us all into the shining light of your presence. O oh God, teach us your way. You are full of compassion. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you 
in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. peace. Can't hear anybody. Peace. Peace. There we go. Peace be with you. Peace be with everyone. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace everybody. Peace be with you. Peace to everybody. Peace. Peace to everybody. Peace to Mike and Jill. Peace to you. Mike and Jill. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace everyone. Hi Eleanor. Hi Eleanor. Peace. Peace everyone. All right, so first of all, just announcements. Um, uh, I, of course, I just want to mention that um, I'm going to be on vacation this week and next week, and Father Pete Wright will be doing um, the service next weekend. Uh, and then the following weekend, I'll be back to lead, uh, lead the service, and our very own Bob Dunn is going to do the homily. So uh, don't miss it. He uh, has a lot of uh, very interesting uh, theological thoughts to share. We've been working on his book at the Thursday morning Bible study group. Um, and I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fantastic. So thanks, Bob, for doing that and being with us that day. Um, so if there are any uh, pastoral emergencies, uh, please contact Deacon Karen. Um, I'm not going anywhere, considering that, uh, of course, we're in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, I will be vacationing. This will be the ultimate staycation, because I will be staying home. <laughs> um, but uh, just a little time to, to let my, my brain decompress. So uh, I hope that, uh, that you will welcome Father Pete next week, and I know that, that you will. I think we are on to um, our celebrations and um, prayer requests and concerns. Um, but first, <clears throat> um, I would like to uh, welcome the Clarys in our midst, Abby and Alan and Adam. I'm Abby, that's my husband, Alan, and this is our son, Adam, and um, we're happy to be, to be joining your, your church and can't wait to the day when we get to meet everybody in person. Adam, how old are you? Five and a half. Five and a half. <laughs> well, we have a fantastic program, children's program that you are going to love when we get to worship together again. Excellent. We are looking forward to it. So yeah. thank you for welcoming us. I just wanted to, to remind everybody that uh, Erina became 21 on Monday. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Erina, now that she's 21, that's a big one. Yes, yeah. it's a big one. On Thursday was my 73rd birthday. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday from all of us. Thank you. This past Tuesday, the 14th, was uh, Justin, my son's uh, 19th birthday. Uh, wow. Yeah. And also, I'm requesting prayer for my mom. She got stuck overseas, and then now she's very, very sick. Sure, we will, we will pray for her. So... Next Saturday, I'm saying this because Mother Patricia won't be here. 
I will be turning 50. Five oh, zero. <laughs> and uh, I just want to thank God because last year, this time, I was very sick. I was awaiting surgery. Actually, my surgery was on my birthday. I was operated on my birthday. So I remember. <laughs> yeah, so I'm turning 50 this year, and I just want to thank God for his abundant love and mercy and faithfulness unto me. I really am grateful to him. I don't know what to say. I think he has a plan for me because last year it was something else. So I'm just grateful. Thank you. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. Lots to celebrate. I sent invitations to some of you to join a new group that is forming in Corona Norco. And it, it's a like a bulletin board where uh, you post your needs for childcare and tutoring. And someone mentioned, uh, what if you can't afford tutoring? So I volunteered to uh, tutor dual immersion students or anyone else that needs my services free of charge. And I think that that would be a wonderful mission for those of us with experience teaching children. Uh, it would be such a gift to their parents and the, and the kids, of course. So I just wanted to let everybody know that that is um, a new Facebook group. It's called, um, has a really long title, like Remote Learning Helping Our Kids Get Through This or something like that. <laughs> but I think if you, um, if you put remote learning on Facebook that, and then Corona Norco Unified, you'll find it. Thank you. All right. Thanks for sharing that. It's our 18th anniversary. Tomorrow. Wow. Oh. We were married in St. John by Father John. <laughs> and met at the Pancake Supper. Pancake Supper, yeah. Aww. Okay. Well, happy anniversary. Thank, thank, thank you. you. There you go. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that Eric Whitaker's V6 Chorale is premiering today. It's the song Sing Gently. Uh, it's a small choir, 17,500 plus. <laughs> anyway, it's been on various Facebook pages, and I'm sure if you go to Eric Whitaker, you'll find the link there, too. It starts at 1030, but it's YouTube, so I'm sure it's going to be going for quite a while. And several of us in the Circle City Corral are part of this. Try to find us. Awesome. So would you join with me as we pray for our birthday boy and girls? Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide with them all the days of their lives. Amen. And loving God, we give you thanks for the love shared between Bill and Mary that has brought them together in marriage and held them together for these 18 years. We pray that they will have many, many more years of love and joy and good health and that the love <coughs> that they share will overflow into your world. We pray also for Godson's mom. We Pray for her as she battles the illness away from home at this time with COVID making things so difficult. We give you thanks that she's getting the best treatment available. We pray that she'll be able to return home again soon. Gracious and 
loving God, as we live through this pandemic, we continue to hold up before you all those in the healthcare industry to keep them safe. And we pray that through research and development that you will bring us a vaccine so that so many of our lives can return to the, the amazing activities and relationships and events of our lives that we enjoy so much and that mean so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again to everyone for mailing in your uh, pledges. Um, we, uh, we have refinanced our mortgage, so uh, we've made one step uh, in a very positive direction. And uh, along with, uh, with your uh, generous and faithful contributions, uh, we are uh, moving through this very uncertain time uh, quite well. So, so thank you so much for that. And we continue with uh, our second hymn, number 423, Immortal Invisible. <laughs> Continue with spiritual communion. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly our own church community, we pray. I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And now let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And together we pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, overcome every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reigns one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. The wisdom of God, the grace of God, and the love of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. The blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.